Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A show right fresh off the bye week for our Birds team, which is six and seven, headed into the weekend against the Washington football team. I'm Jason Avant, and I'm here with my main man, Quinn Michael Q. Say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Glad to be back. It's an exciting time of the year, man. It's, it's, it's time for the playoff push and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, the Eagles get there. And so we're excited to talk about it, excited for what's to come. And uh, yeah, man, as always, let's go. Let's get have, let's have let's some fun it. with it. Let's go. All right. To everyone that's tuning in each and every week, thank you guys for making the Q&A show a success. Make sure that you're tuning in inside the Birds YouTube channel, inside the Birds platforms everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Amazon Music. Also, make sure that you are emailing your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com. Again, inside the birds at gmail.com. Special shout out to Jeff and to Adam and to Hunter and Josh and everyone at Inside the Birds. We appreciate you guys giving us this opportunity and we want to say thank you to you all. To the fans, again, thank you guys. Now, let's get right into this week. Coming off the bye week, we've had success historically here in the city of Philadelphia because of Big Red, Andy Reid. Andy Reid was great off of by weeks, very rarely lost. I think he only has one or two maybe in his illustrious career off of bye week. Why was Andy so successful after a bye in your opinion, Q? You know, I think Honestly, it's going to sound like really plain and simple, but I honestly feel the biggest reason is because going usually going into the bye week, I mean, we had we had you know we had one of the most notoriously difficult, hard, hard hitting physical mm -hmm. training camps um, out of anyone in the league, and so usually those first few games were always tough to even get through them. And um, you know, by the by the time you get to the bye week, your bodies are just so tore up from the season. So I, I generally feel like the biggest reason why Andy is so successful is because he gave he always gave the players the entire week off or as much time as possible. I think one year we talked about I think one year we came in maybe two days and then we had the rest of the week off. Um, and I, I truly believe that that made a huge difference in guys just kind of getting away, resetting, recharging, getting away from the game, getting their body some rest, getting stuff done around the house that the wives are asking them to do or getting out of town and going to see family. Like that really that that week really makes a huge difference in terms of um, revitalizing and re-energizing everyone. So I feel like that's probably the biggest reason why. Um, and it sounds so simple, but I really feel like at least as from the player's perspective, I think that was a huge reason why. Yeah. Rest. Rest. Yeah. And, and I think it just had to do with how hard he would work us earlier in the season. Yeah. And his goal was always to make us hurt earlier in the season and make us um, ready for down the stretch and give it and kind of lighten up at the end of the season. So the bye week was that time you had the rest and relaxation, but you would finally get your legs back and they would be able to sustain it because our workload and practice begin to lighten up too. the bye week okay. and that always correlated. But also when it comes to game planning, I think that it's um, when you when Coach Reed had an, a lot of time to look at an offense or look at a defense, they would come up with great schemes. And, you know, a lot of times throughout, throughout the year, you're you're, you know, bogged down with the monotony of, of playing games and trying to figure out what's next. And being a head coach, this guy's on the injury report. Let me get this other guy ready. You know, things like that, things that come up just like in a business, like you want to run a great business. But, you know, the toilet, you know, is clogged and you focus on that for a minute this person's hurt or this person has a home issue and you get focused on it. But when you have that opportunity to get a bye week and you can just focus on what you do best. And Coach Reed was a great designer of plays and, um, and schemes. So when he had a, a chance to just look at a team and, and see what they do wrong and what they do right and be able to, um, you know, attack that, we always won. So, um, but that, that has to do with a lot of experience. And hopefully that Nick Sirianni came can um, piggyback off that and have his his first win off of bye week. And hopefully the coaching staff has that type of in-depth um, approach to this bye week. Um, so, so I'm looking forward to it. We'll see. We'll see. It's out there to, 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 to be seen. We're, we'll, we'll see how he does. First time. Absolutely. All right. Did the bye weeks 
help or hurt the Eagles more? The Vikings six and seven, 49ers seven and six, both won close games. Washington six and seven, lost to Dallas. These are like, I, I don't necessarily know if a, a bye week helps or hurts. I think that it helps us from this standpoint. Um, when, when I say helps or hurt, I don't know if it helps or hurt because everyone has a bye week. So um, it helps us in, in that we're going to be fresher for the last four games of the season. Having a late bye week is good. Last yeah. four games of the season, everyone else is probably, probably or pretty much done with their bye week. Ours is the last four games of the season against division opponents. I think that can give us an upper hand. Absolutely. And then, you know, when you look at it, I mean, yeah, you know, the Vikings, the Vikings won, Niners won, Washington won. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, no. Washington lost. They lost to Dallas. Um, you know, that that extra week this late in the season is huge in terms of not even just the fact that they, they're kind of beating each other up and, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're, you know, taking each other down a peg a little bit, or well, at least with with you know, Washington and Dallas, you know, yeah. bringing Washington back down. But also it just kind of gives – it gives during this week of game planning, it also gives the coaching staff an opportunity to really, really, like, kind of break down and scout. I mean, especially the Dallas and, and uh -huh. Washington game. That's a game that both teams had to win. So, you know, they're pulling out everything. That, that's a game that they're not going to hold anything back. They're not going to hide anything. So – it's really a chance, a good chance for the coaching staff to get a good look at what they're going to see these last, you know, four games. And, um, you know, from that aspect, it definitely did help. It did give an advantage to the, the Eagles in terms of, of scheming and, and coaching staff wise. And so, um, you know, and from from the player's perspective, you know, having that, that week off, I always think it's an advantage. So even though those teams won and possibly made it a little more difficult to you know get to that wild card spot uh -huh. i still think it was still a benefit especially this late i mean it's it's it, it's tough to play you know so long before you get a bye week as a player but i think it's come at the the perfect time for this team yeah i i agree with that totally i agree with that totally here's the other thing too right so you're looking at these other teams in the division like we said we're fighting right now for the seven seed you got five teams competing for that minnesota we are one, Washington, Atlanta, and New Orleans, right? We beat Atlanta. We beat New Orleans. Um, didn't play Minnesota. Um, we have to beat Washington, right? Yeah. So it kind of helps us. Minnesota, we can't control. Minnesota uh, and, you know, San Francisco, we, 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 San Francisco, we lost to. They have the better record right now, and we lost to them. But the other, the other you know, three teams, you know, we have an opportunity. Two teams we beat already. Washington, we play twice, right? So everything is in our court in order for us to, you know, take advantage of it. So um, I still think that we have to win three out of four in order to have a shot. Four out of four, we want to um, guarantee us getting in, but at least three out of the four in order to, to have a shot. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely, yeah. We'll, we'll, and we'll then, see how that plays out. It, it'll be an ugly record. It'll be nine and eight. <laughs> but it may be, it may be, you know, good enough to get us in the playoffs. Good enough absolutely. to play. Good enough to play the the Buccaneers. <laughs> Just gotta get in, man. Just gotta get in. All right, so Jay, let me let me ask you this. So I got a question. <laughs> All right, we'll get we'll get, get to that playoffs, in a second. You, fight right. and you you get and you get freaking. <laughs> <laughs> the <Tom Buccaneers>. Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, scheduling gods, once again. Yeah, <laughs> Let me um, stop, stop raining on our parade. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, as long as we get in, that's all I want. Um, all right. So did you so did you watch did you get a chance to watch the, the um Washington Dallas game? I did get a chance to watch it. All right. So looking at that game, what did you like what was what do you think we learned from that game as as fans as as former players um as as analysts what do you think we learned from from watching that game you know what one thing that i there's a few things i learned from the game um obviously Dak, Dak prescott didn't play well that game right turn the ball over a few times put it in harm's way way more times than he got he got um in trouble for yeah and it was to to me it, he they they won the game but they had a defensive touchdown 
um, and also have made, made some plays on defense, you know, throughout the game. They end up winning the game, but it just goes to show you that even as well as Dak Prescott has played this year and even part of last year before he got hurt and everyone is lauding him as one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League, how fast this game can humble you. Yeah. Right. And so it made me think about Jalen Hurts. And, you know, he's had some down times, a lot more down than up. And how fast, you know, it can turn around for him. And that's how the game goes. Dak Prescott was a world beater at the beginning of the season. Now he's not playing as well. And there's there's a flow of football. So that kind of, you know, made me think about Jalen and his progression to see if he can ever get there. Sometimes you lose hope, but you got to remember when you're looking at Dak Prescott, like, dude, he's playing really bad today. Mm -hmm. This is a part of NFL. NFL defenses, once they have a beat on you, can make you feel bad. And that's that's the other part of this that I learned is that, the Washington defense is a sound defense. They're not, um, you know, the defense of of just the, the 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 front, you know, the front seven like they were last year and years past. No, they have secondary players that make plays on balls that are always in position with Fuller and Jackson and Landon Collins and and others um, in the back in the back end. They're making plays on the ball, and um, so that just made me think that this team defensively is not um, a pushover. And we have to be able to come in um, and to, um, you know, establish the run game. And, and, and to be truthful, when you look at it, the Cowboys ran for 122 yards. If they hold us to 122 yards, we lose the game. Mm-hmm. Because we've been rushing for, for, for close to 200 yards for the past four weeks, three, four weeks. Right. This past yeah. week was 185 with Gardner Minshew. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, if we're not over that 150, close to 200 mark, they win. So and that's what I'm just pointing to, that their defense, um, you know, is solid. And so that, that's that's one of the things that I learned. And then they have they have adequate weapons that they, they finally get. They're getting back. They've gotten back Curtis Samuel. Um, we know about Terry McLaurin. Um, Antonio Gibson, everyone is lauding him as, you know, you know, one of the leaders in Russia. He's getting a lot of attempts. He's not a great running back, but he's getting a, a boatload of attempts. What do you mean by that, Jason? He averages 3.9 yards a carry. Four point is, is probably the minimum that you want, right, for four-yard four average. When you look at him, he's, he's um, carried the ball twice as many times as Miles. Miles had. Miles um, almost had 600 yards. He has 800 yards, right? Yeah. So if Miles gets the ball just as much as he does. Miles is already over a thousand. Yeah, wow. You know, so when you when you think of that, right? So he would be he would be beating Antonio Gibson by by 200 yards if he got the same opportunity. So so um, I think that's a little bit overrated, you know, a little bit that running game. But they have a but they have a um, a quarterback that will make mistakes because he's young. But he's athletic and he and he and he can get hot. So yeah. we got to make sure that we get the pressure on him. And uh, I'm giving you a whole game analysis. Seems no, like. that's good. Um, man. The uh, but but Heineke can make some plays. Is he the long term solution? I don't necessarily know. Um, I doubt they're thinking of him, thinking of him as a long term solution. But um, they definitely have some playmakers in McLaurin, Samuel, um, Sims. They lost the tight end for the season. Um, but back of Tanya came in and do well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you're spot on with all that. And I, to me, the biggest thing that the, the biggest thing that I saw was, I mean, both teams' defenses were 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 very good. I mean, Dallas is, I mean, everybody's been talking about it. They've been making, you know, they've been kind of up and down all year, but it looks like right now they're starting to come together and they're getting nasty at the at the right time. Yeah. But um I was impressed with with the the Washington football team's defense. I mean, that's a high-powered offense, and, and they held them in check for the most part. And, you know, most of it, you know, Dak was making some mistakes, but a lot of it, like you said, was that, that back seven is, you know, that secondary is, is legit. So, you know, I'm you know looking this week now, they have a lot of guys that are going to be possibly out because of COVID, but, you know, I'm assuming most of those, even though, you know, most of those will probably get back because I think their team is – fairly like 98% vaccinated or something like that. Mm-hmm. So there's a good possibility a lot of those guys come back. But 
you know, I'm I'm anticipating it's going to be a hard fought game. And even and for some reason, every time we play Washington, even though no matter how bad they are, they always play the Eagles tough. So, you know, never thought this game was going to be, you know, kind of a cakewalk or anything like that. But, you know, I was I was impressed with that secondary just as you were. And um, it's going to be a tough one, man. It's going to be, it's yeah, gonna be a hard fought one. We can get if we can get our D line to 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 Tyler, um, we got a chance because his his pass game was awful. Yeah. His pass game was bad, right? That's that's for it's for 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 him it's probably the worst game I seen I've seen him play when you when you end up with a fifty five quarterback rating. That's that's pretty bad. That's um eleven for twenty five. <laughs> he's um, one of, he's one of them quarterbacks though that like make you nervous because he makes. He makes decisions and throws that he should never do. But he and gets away with a lot of them. What's that? He gets away with a lot of them. Yeah. And those are the kind of quarterbacks that can come back and hurt you. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they do stuff that they shouldn't do. So it makes me a little nervous there. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, We'll see how that goes. But, but I'm looking forward, like you said, to a hard fall game. Um, It's a 50-50 game. Is the Eagles are not tremendously better than the Redskins, and the Redskins are not, you know, better than the Eagles. It's um, whoever plays well that day. It's not a, <laughs> a a large margin for error for either team. Yeah, roster wise, they're they're equally matched. <laughs> so that's where I am with that. Um, are the Eagles good enough to make it to the playoffs? Q, realistically, <laughs> are the Eagles good enough to make the playoffs? I think oh, that's, a, that's a tough question, man, because it depends on what this coaching staff does with this team. Mm-hmm. If they swallow their pride and say, you know what, it's okay to just run the ball and play old school football punt the ball when we need the punt and we don't have to throw it every every down. We don't have to come up with these creative off the chart plays that nobody's even thinking of and just play regular football. Yes, I do think this team is good enough. I think if you look at the O-line, the D-line, when they're hot, they're playing phenomenal. You look at the secondary, there's some 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 hole spots in there and in the, in the back seven, there's some holes here and there. But if, if the coaching staff is able to kind of hide those, those holes, and kind of uplift the the you know take care of the guys like Slay and put those guys in positions to make plays. I do think this team can get to the playoffs. Um, the biggest the biggest problem, and it's been all year, is what are we getting from the receiver position? Not just from the Devontae, but just across the board, the, the mm. receiver position and the quarterback position. Those are the two key parts. And, and then for you know that's the most well, the quarterback is the most important position. Yeah, um, obviously, but if this coaching staff can come up with a game plan that minimizes the risk in terms of turnovers and, and, and opportunities to turn the ball over on downs or whether in the air or fumbles, whatever. um, I think the team can do it. It's, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty football. It's not going to be like week one when they played the, the the Falcons, it's going to be ugly football. Um, But if they are, they're willing to embrace that. I think this team can make the playoffs. Hmm. It's a lot of ifs, though, right? <laughs> that's it. That's that's the if 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 if, 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 if. if it was a fifth, we'll be sure. Uh, Listen, we should get like a little counter on how many times I said. No, that's fine. So so no, I understand what you're saying completely. Now, my take. My take on this is this. At some point, we got to throw the football. Correct. At some point. We can't expect Gardner Minshew to, to garner 200-plus two, yards of running with RPOs. Right. And, you know, just handing the ball off. Because eventually, they're just going to go for the ball carrier and and just dare him to run it and try to punish him with someone else right eventually that's going to happen right they're not going to that's 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 what's going to happen 
So, and then what happens when a team plays man coverage against your RPOs? And now it's hard for you to, to throw that RPO. Yeah. Like you the know, Niners so, did. Huh? Like the Niners did. Like the Niners did. Right? You start bumping and pressing the, the, the throw, the outlet. They took away the run game with the box. Now they, 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 they're, they're bumping and running your outlet. Now you have to make a, a great throw when it's really a run scheme. You know, it's, it gets tougher. Yeah. True. Um, so at some point, we're going to have to run the football. I mean, pass the football. And when that time, what's going to happen? Because as we're looking on this season, Devontae Smith, 50 receptions on 82 targets. That's just okay. That's a high-volume guy. I, I, I love Devontae Smith. I like his growth. I think that he's going to be really, really good. But five for eight, catching, it's good. You want your number one guy to be six out of eight. Five out of eight is good, but six out of eight, seven out of eight, that's pretty good. Six out of eight is where you want them, like 68, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Dallas Goddard's next 41 catches, 56 targets. That's about probably, that's about right. That's a, that's where it should be, somewhere in that that that, that um, percentage range. Quez, next, 31, 31 targets, uh, 31 receptions. No touchdowns, though. Game will next. So one, two, three, four. Then you got then you got Rager at 26. Right? And and I say all of that to say this. If it's not Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard, if the team figure out a way, the opposing team figures out a way to take those guys out, can you win with the other people? And this is that type of game. Let me tell you this. This is that type of game because William Jackson can, can, can run and play anybody. He's done it for years. He's been the guy that had to guard everybody. So he can flow and run. And Fuller is no slouch either. You throw it over there too many times, he's going to pick it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this is that type of game where you can literally put a guy on a guy and make the others beat you if you can stop the run. And... Will they be able to? I think it's in Quez. I think Jalen Rager has a lot to show, man. And we didn't talk about this the last game. We didn't talk about this, and this is my fault. And so I'm going to address it right now. The mental problem, the, the problem with Jalen Rager, it has to do with a lack of technique, right? It has to do with the mentality. Mm -hmm. and it has to do with inexperience okay. right now lack of technique is what gets you pushed toward the sideline on most of your go routes because you're running around people lack of technique is what gets you um a one yard slant route on fourth and two um, and you don't get, you know, three to five yards up the field so you can time it up better with the quarterback. A lack of technique is not putting your hands in the right position based on what the ball is rather than what you want it to be. Right? Yeah. Catching the ball like this when the ball is back here where you can go like that or like that. Right? Okay. Mentality has to do with when something goes bad, it's not going right. I dropped two balls, three, but two that, that counted at the end. How do I respond? The next game, do I turn down a kickoff return that's kicked to the one? Oh, yeah. That's mentality. I run up on the ball and totally misjudge it by a, by a whole two yards on a punt return. Ended up making something out of it. But you can't, as a punt returner, you can't misjudge a ball by two yards. Yeah. That's mentality. Right? So somewhere along the road, I don't know if it's because of quote unquote how hard the fans are or quote unquote 
you know, the Justin Jefferson comparison and hearing the noise, he got to figure it out, man, because we're going to need him to play a lot better. And the mentality right now is not the best. Yeah. And he can do it. Like I said, he has some dog in him, but he has to channel it. This is not the time to like cower. This is not the time to, you know, you know, shrink. It's not the time to shrink. It's the 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 most important four games of the year. And they're in they're in dire need for a robin. <laughs> they're in dire need for a sidekick. They're in dire need of one, right? Yeah. That can make a play or two. So um it's time for that. And when I say inexperience. Inexperience with just knowing how to get open. Inexperience of dealing with the NFL and its vicissitudes, right? Up and down one day, um, bigger corner this day, faster corner that day. I'm in the slot this day. Um, knowing route timing and depth and where the quarterback wants me to be, that's just inexperience. And like I said, when you come from a TCU and you and they, they're feeding you all the information, man, it puts you at a deficit. And a lot of these things that are occurring and happening, I don't necessarily blame on Jalen Rager. Because remember, man, Jalen Rager didn't pick himself. Yeah. Right? Sure. A lot of these guys that are not panning out, they didn't pick themselves, ladies and gentlemen. They did not. A lot of the earnest, though we want to put fuel on the fire and blame Jalen Rager, there's people that pick Jalen Rager. They, they deserve part of what's going on because um, lack of development and a few things that, that, that could have been made better in the drafting process. Makes sense. Okay. Um, so that, that I, I wanted to say that. I wanted to say that. I feel, no, I feel you. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Now listen, man. You, the, there's multiple times you then came on here and talked about the mid majors, man. What? I just want TCU. TCU, man. They I'm was not, in our I'm conference. Not, I'm not. I'm not coming at you. <laughs> I'm not coming at you. I'm not coming at TCU. I'm talking about their style. I'm messing with you, man. I'm messing. I got. I got you, man. Uh, you know, because because Boise was balling when we, were, when we were in school. Well, it wasn't when I was in school, but after I was out of school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, man, but you know, you hit the nail on the head, though, and and everything that that you, you know, for if, if anyone, you know, and to me, the biggest the biggest um, problem I have with with um, the situation with Jalen is um, not not that he. It seems like he he gets more angry with constructive criticism. Now, not of it, not all of it is constructive, obviously, especially on social media, mm -hmm. but and and we talked about it on the show before. You know what you just broke down right there. Right there was not a gripe. What you broke down was what was put on tape by him. It was exactly. It wasn't attacking him. It was just telling them straight up, like this is what is going on. This is what we see. This is what everyone sees. This is how you can fix it. And you know, very often, I don't want to say very often, but a lot of um, players that I've been around in the league that you've been around in the league, they don't last very long in the league because they can't take that type of coaching. They can't take that that type of criticism. They don't know how many times. The only person I ever saw in the league that never got yelled at or con got constructive criticism nonstop was probably Donovan. Even Doc. Doc would tell Sean McDermott. He would tell um, Spagnola. He would tell him, listen, coach me like I'm a rookie. And they did well to a certain extent. They knew yeah. the, the line. They, they coached them hard. They broke yeah. down everything. And that's the difference is that you as a player, you you think that you're doing one thing. You, you always feel like you're doing things the right way. And you don't know exactly what the coach is thinking and what they're seeing. And so this just I just I just get really frustrated when it, it feels like the same thing. And it's been two years and it's the same thing over and over again. And it's really not. You know, it seems like he's more um, – he's ready to kind of attack everyone on social media instead of going and attacking the field. And, and I feel like – I feel bad because I don't want to 
I feel like we're always coming down on them, but he's got all the tools. Like you said, he's got everything there. All he's got to do is just work on a few little things to make himself more successful. Then he would get so much praise in the city if he would just figure that part of the game out, just yeah. figure that part out and then exploit what you're, you know, take, take what you're not doing. Well, work on it, make it, a, make it a strength. And then what you do have as a strength, make that even a bigger strength. So, yeah. You know, and, you know, I just I, I want the kid. I want him. I don't want to call him a yeah. kid. He's a young man. I want him to succeed. I want him to become a, a great player. I want people to stop comparing him to Justin Jefferson. I want I want people to say, well, you know, that was a good draft. Now, look at look at Jalen. Like, that's what I want for him. And, I, you know, it just sucks that yeah. um, it, it just feel he feels like he feels a certain way about it. So, um, yeah, the thing is, is, is that a lot of times. It's hard in his situation, right? Because early in the season, he was getting targets. It didn't pan out that way. And his play has reduced his 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 targets and, you know, his playing time. Quez's playing time has risen. Everybody else has risen. His playing time is decreasing. Yeah. Right? And there's an easy way about it and say, you know what? It's everybody else's fault. Or I can take earnest and look at what I'm seeing on film and get better from it. I'm hoping that's the case. But a lot of times for a lot of these guys that are first rounders or guys that people, um, you know, praise for having talent um, like Jalen and like many others, they don't know how to play that second position. They don't understand, okay, the ball isn't being thrown to me a lot this game. I may have had one target, but the ball always finds you. So if you're moping and if you're not into the game mentally and you're not ready, the ball will find you because it's going to prove to you why you're not being one of the ones that are targeted early. Mm. That's it right there. You know, it, it, that's how the game is. And you have to stay mentally ready. It's a hard thing to do to go an entire game and not get a pass, but in the fourth quarter when the game is on the line, four or five of them are going to come your way. <laughs> it's hard, man. It's I, that's, That was my NFL career. I wasn't getting the ball in the red zone. I wasn't getting the ball in, you know, first and second down. I was only going to get it in critical situations. And what happens if, you know, we weren't in critical situations in the first half, meaning first and second down we were kicking their butt and we, uh, we didn't need many third downs. But in the fourth quarter, uh oh, there's seven first down, uh, seven, seven third downs. Mm. I ain't touched the ball all game. You got to be in a, you got to be in a might, right mental space to be able to handle that pressure. And and you can't be a moper. You got to be a look. The ball's gonna come when it comes. Let me do something else. Let me find work. Let me be a part of the team in a different way. I will say this though about Jalen is is that he's he he has been blocking. Yeah, I saw a couple times. He yeah. He has been blocking. He has been playing. That's a good sign that he's that 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 it that it can be turned around. Now, as far as as far as things that he can do, he has to slow down. Slow down. You ever seen a jitterbug that just want to you want to move? You want to do something? That's Jalen Rager. He's a he's jittery, meaning that. When a guy's in front of him, the guy can speed him up and, and dictate the tempo. As a receiver, you always dictate tempo. Even if a guy has a better angle than you, if you stop and pause a second, he's going to second guess it because you always dictate tempo. So it doesn't matter how fast he runs unless you're running a go route down the field. But if you're running anything horizontal, you're running anything that's in toward the quarterback, it doesn't matter how fast you run at all because you dictate the tempo. You decide when you stop and when you break for the most part or how you stop, how you break. Your pace, slow down, learn the nuances of this game, right? So instead of letting people control your tempo, you control the tempo and slow down a bit and Get in and out of your cuts the way that you need to. But that, that has to do with being patient. Slowing yourself down. Pacing it down. Speeding up when you need to. That's a big That's a big thing. Okay. Yeah. That's good. And I will say, too, I, I picked up on this, too. I'm going to add that. 
um, earlier in the year, I don't know, and I, I think I might have said it on the show too before. He, there were a lot of times early in the year that there were pass plays that were going for him, and he was open. And for whatever reason, whether it be a tip ball, whether it be a uh, yeah, just, a bad just throw, missed, it just yeah. didn't work out. So I feel I feel him on that part. Like that, it does get frustrating when you're open, especially early in the season. He was probably open at least you know two or three times a game, and just for whatever reason, it just never worked out. Yeah, um, and so I I, I I I can see now the frustration. I, 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 I've been there. You remember Nick Foles' um, twenty-seven and two year, twenty-seven touchdowns and um, and two interceptions. You remember that year? I wasn't on the team that. Year. I think it was the first year with with um, the first year with Chip Kelly. Okay. Nick Foles was balling, balling. This dude could not hit me for nothing. I say, like, I was like 50% on pass to, to receptions and targets, something like that. I'm, and when I say I'm wide open the entire time, wide open, not close to being open. The dude just could not throw the ball to me for that that year for some reason. I don't know what it was. It just it irritated me to death, right, because everybody was scoring touchdowns and I'm wide open. And I'm like, dude, like, when you when when I'm open, always open, you don't either see me or you don't throw the ball in a good spot that I can get to it. Like, literally wide open in the end zone, a dude to throw a 10-yard short. I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. Like, it just happened over and over again. Can't get frustrated. You're a pro. Can't get frustrated. You're a pro. Go in every day working like you need to. It'll turn around eventually. That never turned around for me, but... <laughs> but it will for, for him. He's so young. He'll turn around. All right, let's get to that draft. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, so football fans, I'm sure we all love an action packed, high scoring NFL game. But with the latest no brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an, an official sports betting partner for the NFL, you'll be a winner once a single point is scored. New customers who bet just $1 on any team can score $100 on free bets. It's that simple. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also get skin in the game with the same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the <clears throat> DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ITB, bet $1 on any team to score, and win $100 in free bets. If they score, you score with the promo code ITB. This week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 and older, Pennsylvania only. New customers only restrictions apply. In partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problems, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Let's get right into it, Q. We're gonna we, we already kind of covered the next four weeks. We covered like the offense and what it needs to evolve for the pass game um a little bit. Let's talk about the defense, right? Let's talk about what we've seen from the defense. Let's talk about its adjustments. Are you comfortable with the defense going forward these last four games? Um, with the way we're playing now? Yeah, you know, it, they it was a slow build. Um, you know, started off really slow, really frustrating. Um, kind of sitting in zones and then started to, you know, um, put in different coverages, different blitz schemes, um, different different fronts, you know, kind of playing around with different personnel. And I think that um, that Gannon really started to find the niche with the, the, the not his niche, but really started to find the, the, the right um, combination of players on the field. Um, and, you know, it was, it's good that the bye week came here, but for the defense, it, it was tough because they started – I think they started to really figure it out um, as a group in terms of understanding what he wanted. He – you know, Gannon understanding what his players could and couldn't do and putting them in the right positions. And so, um, you know, hopefully that does continue that ascension, if you will, of this defense um, because they, they really were starting to play at a high level. I still think, you know, we need a little bit more out of Nelson. Um, I, I think he's starting to – um, you know, end up he's starting to show himself as kind of the weak link in that secondary, 
And uh, I suspect this down the stretch, teams are going to start to kind of focus on attacking him. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, he's going to have to kind of step it up a little bit. And, um, you know, obviously, man, I, I've been pretty pretty happy with this defense over the last few weeks. You know, uh, not not too much bad, I can say. I mean, we did talk about first and second down. Um, hopefully they, they scheme that up a little bit and kind of have a better understanding of, of what teams are doing. You know, now they're starting to throw on first and second down because we're in more kind of a run stopper defense. But um, for the most part, man, I'm, I've been happy last few weeks. Yeah, last few weeks. I, I was kind of disappointed um, with, you know, them giving up four straight scores to the to, to, to the Jets, right? Very true. Um, so you're kind of disappointed in that. Uh, they, they figured it out. The good thing is that they adapted. And uh, and and they shut him down. They shut him out in the second half, which is which is very very good. Um, you're going to have games where the first fifteen of the offensive coordinator man is is <laughs> tough, and you just got to think of it as a defense. It's like, dude, just hold on. I, I know that's yeah. going <laughs> to us, like blitz and everywhere. You're like, dude, we didn't see any of this on tape. Like this is both corner. They never bring the corner. Like you just, it's just like you're like, whoa, what ha- what's happening? But you just sitting there like, oh, they they're going to go back to who they who they are on film, you know. Eventually. Yeah. And then that's when the game kind of settles in, you know. So, um, so I'm glad they were able to 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 adjust again. Play calling is a lot better when it comes to rocking the safeties. When it comes to playing man coverage. When it comes to getting these guys up in position to challenge people. Understanding. Um, the linebackers understanding uh, depths and drops, um, angles like that. Just the play of TJ um, Edwards, the time where they were running the bootleg over, um, I, I can't remember which game, and he just was right underneath that throw for the interception, that first interception. It was a home game. Uh, that would have been. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what I'm saying is, like, little things like that, wh- that, those were the plays that weren't getting made by the linebackers, right? So um, Alex Singleton. Um, coming in and playing lights out for Davion Taylor, 12 tackles, three tackles for loss, um, one pass deflection. That's a really good game for him. And um, so it wasn't much of a drop off, you know, maybe early in the game, they were able to run in the pass and maybe you could point to a few things, but like they got it right back on track. Um, So I'm thinking that, that they're hitting their stride at the right time. Again, weaknesses, Steve Nelson right now has to play a lot better Sean, he got to put, put a lot better, you know, man-to-man coverage tape on the field where got where people um, doesn't feel like he's the weakest link. And also another weak link to me is Anthony Harris. He does a bunch of, like, I, I need to see more activity. It's a bunch of, like, I need to know he's out there. I know Marcus S is out there because Marcus S is making, making some type of something happen when he's out there. I want to see him show up a little bit more in, in the past game and also in, in – and um, you know, in the game, I want to hear his name called a lot more. I just don't. I just think that it's uh, he's just out there. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, you don't. Yeah, want that. yeah. You don't want that. No, I mean, yeah. You continue. I was just, I was just kind of adding, adding to that, man. He's just out there, and yeah. It, but, 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 but there is Slay balling. Um, yeah. you know, so. Just yeah. that's that's what he's doing. He's he's balling, and uh, we'll make a we'll make another Pro Bowl. Um, Avante Maddox has, has been playing, you know, well for the most part. Um, had 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 a few slip ups, few moments, but um, he oh, did you, did you see that? Did you see that um that slant route that Crowder ran on him? It was like an angle slant. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't know Crowder still had that in him. Oh yeah, Crowder gave him the blues with that round. I was like, oh my, cut it up, put it on the film, coach. Like this, that's like I, if I was the Eagles coach, I would put take that play and play it for our guys. Like, why don't you guys? Do I need to get this old dude in here to show y'all how to run routes? Like, what are we like? That's that's type of stuff that the coach should be doing right there. Is taking the other dude's stuff is like, hey. This is what we have, but watch this slant. Just check this out. Ooh, my God, I wish we had one person that could do that, right? Like, so that's how you said that, that bring it out of bring it out of a player right there. That used to be the worst, man, in, in the film. Like, if yeah. you a DB and that happened and 
in UFM, you already know what's going to happen. The coach will pause it, and you just start to sink in your seat. Yeah, I see. Right, you see. Here we go. And they just re- it felt like they rewind that thing about 20 times. Bro. 20 times. It happens. <laughs> Every time. Every- you know the thing about the NFL? One bad play never dies. Oh, no. That's teaching. Today. That's the thing about the NFL. Because of all the cameras and because you got to play the teams the- twice in the year – or sometimes, or you got to play the team next year, or you got to play them in preseason or something like that. That play that you think is over with always reaches the film again. Somehow. It's like you got to play in the preseason. Oh, remember that play we had? It was wide open. Jason dropped it. Damn. We're going to call it again. <laughs> like, it never dies. <laughs> A bad play never dies in the NFL. <laughs> Ever. You know, and then, and- the coach looking at it like, hey, Q, we're in a perfect cover. Tell him, tell him. Like, coach get mad at you. All, like, coach, it's 2021. I made that mistake in 2017. <laughs> like, he getting mad all over again. Forgot that it's 2021. He be like, man. Just, re- <laughs> just bringing up old old memories, man. Old that's memories. that's like, and then the other part, too, like why it never dies is, is it, it, it could very well end up at NFL Films. <laughs> You could be on you could be on yeah, uh, it, NFL films forever getting ran over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It can it can end up where it's one of those all time run. Like Tracy Porter is going down in history for the beast quake. Get off me. Like it just is. Like you know the dude that got mushed out of bounds on, on Marshawn's list, greatest run. I know it was Tracy Porter. It was him. He went to Indiana. I know him. It's the same dude that caught the pick for the, for the, for the, for the New Orleans and the Indianapolis Super Bowl. Same guy, but he got mushed on that play. Like, that, that's going to be forever. It's going on. Oh, man. I would not want to be that. I don't want to be that dude. Yeah, it, it happens. Like, yeah, there's and what made that worse, the video on YouTube where the dude, where the dude was uh, – Darren, Darren Sharper. I ain't gonna say the rest, but yeah. if y'all y'all know what I'm talking about, the, the the there's a video on YouTube of that actual play with a guy voicing over it. Have you seen oh, that? Oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I can't I can't say the name. My but. gosh, the, uh... <laughs> oh man. Now, so so that that's pretty much the defense. I think that the defense are are, are it's, it's it's coming to a place where they're they're enjoying being coached yeah. they understand what's going on they're um using their players better hopefully they can continue to mix in some disguises and start to change it up on some so on some first and second down right throwing in there a cover four throwing in there a cover two you know just as a change up we're not saying that you do it as every time but you do it when you feel that a team has a beat on you and you recognize, okay, this team for the last three drives have thrown it on first and second down. All right, let's put this cover two on. You know, so things like that. Yeah. So that's why I, I want to see, you know what what I do, I want to see a little bit more of. What? And you made me think about this earlier, but like a lot of times when you have a, a, a player like Nelson that's kind of struggling a little bit, I would like to see some corner blitzes coming out of there. Just to mm-hmm. kind of start to make make teams think a little bit, um, I think that's a good way to kind of keep you know if teams are starting to kind of figure out you know where the weak link quote unquote is um, and start to attack um, you know that that area of the field. You know if you get a, a crack split or a certain situation where you get the formation that you want, you can do you kind of an automatic with a corner blitz off the edge. I think that would be very good mm-hmm. to kind of get Nelson kind of into the game, but also kind of change up his looks and. And start to make guys think because right now he's kind of stagnant in this in his position. If he's impressed, he's impressed. If he's off, he's off. He's, you know, he's starting to get. Um, they're starting to figure out how to attack him. So yeah, I think that'd be a good way to kind of change the game up a little bit for him. So that, that's a that's a great call. That's a great call. There's nothing like like it's it's amazing to me like that like that um like in baseball when a guy makes a dive and catch you can guarantee that he gonna get a hit, base hit at least. Yeah, it's yeah. just how it is, right? So, and that's how the game of football is. You block a guy to the ground as a receiver, and you hyped about it. Next thing you know, you even call a third down or call a touchdown. It just happens like that. It's momentum. Same way with the defensive position. 
you go in there and you 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 level a, a running back and get to the quarterback or cause a deflection or something like that, your confidence shoots up. That's all it is. The game is exchanging like energy. That's it. So some team is high, some team is low. One player is high, one player is low. So you got to make sure that you're trying to figure out ways to get, get your player's confidence up during that game. Absolutely. Yeah. So good a few point, things man. before we few, few things before we get to the manscape read. Um Walter Payton, player of the year nominee, one of our favorites, the city of Philadelphia's favorite, well, just one of my favorite teammates, just in just in history, just is um Jason Kelsey is being nominated as Walter Payton man of the year. We know that he does. Yep, correct. Right there. Boom, boom, boom. Jason, great job. Um, does a lot in the community, but I just want to talk to to you know, the fans of, a little bit about Jason Kelsey. One of the hardest working individuals you will ever meet in your life. One of the most genuine human beings you will ever meet in your life. And one of the most accountable leaders you will ever meet in your life. That's the one thing that you will say about Jason Kelly. He's going to hold people accountable and he's going to hold himself to that standard and higher. Um, so to see him being honored in this way. Um, I know he talked about laying uh, a bunch this this you know you know this week, but I just want to say it couldn't happen to a better person. So we see all the things that he does in the community, but just letting you know from from one of his teammates and from everybody's perspective that's around it, he has the utmost respect from management, players, janitors. Everyone loves Jason Kelsey because of the type of person he is, um, and who can ever forget the. Uh, the most famous speech in Philadelphia sports history. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I was I was that. Laughing my eyes out when that speech was going on. That was awesome, man. What, what did I laugh at? What did I laugh at? He he said somebody, Aguilar can't catch. <laughs> <laughs> Lanes on roids. <laughs> on roids. Can't stay off the juice. <laughs> stay off the juice, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh man, that was a great time. That was a great but, speech. But, but it couldn't happen to a better person, man. And um, hopefully he wins it. Hopefully he, he's um, you know, done enough, you know, charitable giving in order to 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 be that person. But if it has to do anything to do with character too, not just with what you give, it has to do with personality and what type of man you are, he definitely should win it. So um congrats to Jason Kelson. That's awesome, man. Congrats, yeah. Jason. Yep. That's good. All right, man, get that Manscaped read. Support for the Q&A show is brought to you by Manscaped, the champions of the world for men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, and they just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard it right, 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code QA at manscaped.com. Imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed, and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. I've tried the 4.0, and I'm blown away. The craftsmanship and details are second level. Nobody wants to get hurt down there. You know what I mean. So Manscaped engineered the ultimate growing and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer has a cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces those accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. You gotta be comfortable down there. This upgraded trimmer also has a multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock and has a 4000K LED spotlight that can turn on and off for more precision on your shade. The new lawnmower even allows you to customize your trim with guard lens sizes one through four. How about wireless charging? Their new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction to help the battery last longer. Men, you can't use the same trimmer on your nuts and face. Nobody needs pubes in their mouth. Get your own ball hair and body trimmer with Manscaped. Make me time the best time like Jason Levant always does. Get 20% off and free shipping with code QA at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. 
Get 20% off and free shipping with code QA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code QA. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And your balls will thank you. <laughs> my favorite part. Always. <laughs> All right, let's get into it, man. Yep. All right, Mike. So, top. Let's let's talk about topic two. Michael versus Devontae. So after after Sunday, there's a lot of talk that the Eagles should have taken Parsons over Devontae Smith. What do you think about? Do you do you agree with that? Do you disagree? And different. Man, I'm not. I'm not into that. I don't love that. Yeah. I really don't love that. Let me tell you why I don't love that. Every hindsight is always 2020. And I think Devontae Smith is going to be a really good player. Well, we know that Micah Parsons is going to, you know, have, you know, probably win the defensive rookie of the year and so on. And there's a lot of people that's like he should win the, you know, the def- the, the NFL, you know, you know defensive player and all that type of stuff. But ultimately, I think both players are going to have successful careers. You chose Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith is having a really good year for a rookie. Devont, um, Michael Parsons is playing outstanding. Uh, but you can't look back at it and say, hey, just because – and that's what the Eagles fans do, man. And we got to stop doing it. I like We got to stop doing it. Like, we, the grass is not always green on the other side. Just because we get Michael Parsons doesn't mean that we're going to use Michael Parsons the same way. Mm, yeah. Doesn't mean he's going to have the same success here. Just does not. He could have, he can be a great player that can switch, you know, from team to team and be great. But it's not many players that can switch from team to team and still stay great. It's hard. Yeah. So we don't know how Michael Parsons would have turned out here in Philadelphia. We just don't. Yeah. But we do have a a very, very good young player in Devontae Smith, and he's productive. He's leading the team in receptions. He's tied for touchdowns. He's um, leading the team in yards. What else do you want? He's played all the games. What else do you want? Yeah. I agree. I think – I agree. I think – I think the Eagles made the right choice. I think Devontae was the right choice. Um, in this, you know, in this defense, who knows where he'd be playing? Um, yeah, we'd probably be playing in the middle of it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I think I think the Eagles made the right choice. And, and and really, listen, man, this is this is year one. It's it's easy after you know half a, half a year to say you know we should have did this, we should have did that. I I applaud. I think I think the. The pick. I think the Eagles got the pick right. Let's just leave it at that. I'm not gonna go too crazy into it. You address it perfectly. Um, even if my even if Parsons was there, I don't even think the Eagles would take him because they just don't value the linebacker position the same way as other teams. So I don't even think that that would have even been consideration. How we might have moved down and got more picks if Parsons yeah. was there, quite possibly. I don't know. I don't know how he would have been used in this offense. I just, I just don't know with the young coaching staff if they would have had the, the awareness to be able to use him at defensive end and be able to use him in stunts and be able to use him at you know on a second level. I don't know if they would have had the intuition to figure that out, right? Yeah. So, so you, when you when you get a, a more veteran coaching staff they can be able to figure those things out but i'm pretty unless he just killed people in training camp when it was one-on-one time and the running backs were nowhere near him he's like hey let me get a chance to do that against the left tackle i can do that and you see it you know that could possibly happen um but yes he's a he's he's a good player he's a very good player but uh, but but again i don't know how he would be implemented here yeah I mean, Quinn, Quinn uses him so, so well. I mean, <laughs> he moves him around to so many different positions. Uh, you can tell he's, he's, his, his defensive coordinator is not a rookie. So exactly a big part. Yeah. A big part of the reason why he looks so successful is because of the coaching around him. Like exactly. Said. All right. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, 
Ooh. Oh, say it. I like this question. Because this is a good hypothetical, right? Mm -hmm. And you're the perfect person to answer this. What would this offense or this receiving group, right, what would it look like without Devontae? It would be awful. <laughs> it's not it's not good now. <laughs> like what? You want me to lie? I'm not lying. <laughs> Why are you laughing? We would go from a, we would go from a C minus to an F. <laughs> oh, these are these this is pain. This is a painful what? Life. <laughs> what do you mean? What are, you, what are we saying here? Like I I when you when you when you draft young players, you can't expect everyone to pan out the way that you um see other guys do. And remember, there's pressure off people. There's an Adam Thielen in, in, in Minnesota that can take pressure off until Justin Jefferson comes into his own. Yeah. Okay. There is not many first round picks that's counted on day one to take over the team. Mike Evans had Vincent Jackson, Deshaun Jackson, right? It, they, there's always a relief for the most part. C.D. Lamb just came into a situation where you got Gallup, you got Amar. They didn't need him at all. They were good. They were good without him. Yeah. You know, so when you when you when you put a bunch of young guys in there, you can't expect them to go out and be world beaters. And I'm not saying it as a negative to them. I'm just saying that we're not up to par with the rest of the NFL in this at this position. And it's hurting us thus far. And it's hurting Jalen Hurts and it's hurting our team. It's something that we have to improve upon. And if we want to make the playoffs and we want to be do anything in the playoffs, this position group has to play a lot better than it has been. So without Devontae Smith, we got no shot. Boom. That's it. And that's the answer. <laughs> so that's the, <laughs> that's the answer, right? So everyone that's questioning whether or not the Eagles should have took Devontae or Micah, there's your answer right there. <laughs> so All right. I like that. That's good, man. Yeah. Shoot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's let's just jump into the audience question because we got no no, we got we gotta do two things before. Before we get into before we do that, we're gonna we're gonna bounce around a little bit because we're gonna end this show because I'm not gonna go on and on because we got like 72 more questions over here on this other page. Okay. <laughs> do we? Yeah, we got more questions because because topic three is is a little bit different. It's a little bit disjointed. But here you go. Now here's a question for you. Jalen Hurts, Gardner Minshew. We haven't talked about it on this show yet. It's been reported. Or we think, not reported, we think that Jalen Hurts' um, ankle is really hurting him. And mm. Gardner Minshew may get that start again. Everyone knows my take. People have been killing me on social media today because of my take. Mm. That Gardner Minshew would, would be the starter for this game. I'm not wrong yet. <laughs> Just let you know, a little bit of self grin. There you go. Pat yourself on the back. No, I'm not saying that as a slight to Jalen Hurts because I think Jalen Hurts can be a good player in this league. I just see what's happening outside of football. Whenever an organization is saying, hey, starting quarterback that wants to play through an injury – sit back and wait and rest. Do you think Lamar Jackson is coming out if his ankle is hurt, if he says he can, he, he wants to stay in? It's just not happening. You think Aaron Rodgers is coming out of the game if his, if his finger is, his left finger is broken and he says, I want to stay in the game, he's staying in the game. The only time that the player's interest is is looked out for is when there's a when there's a concussion. Yeah. Every other time, it's always in the best interest of the team is what is is what the team is going to side with. So if the player says he can play and the player is going to put them in best situation to win, the team is going to be for. 
if the player says, I don't want to go in, and the team feels like he can go in, they're gonna they're gonna create a story and or make him go in. Yeah. Is this not the NFL? Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is that Jalen Hurts wanted to play through an injury. He said it last Wednesday. He was told that he could not. It's not reported that way. This week coming up, that injury just keeps going on. I don't know many injuries that involve your ankle that that last that long when you did not leave the game in the Meadowlands Stadium, MetLife. He played to the end of the game. Yep. I haven't seen that many ankle injuries in my life that you can finish a game that you're not good enough two weeks and a bye week, uh, <laughs> a week and a bye week and be ready for a game. I haven't seen too many of those in my career. That's all yeah. I'm saying. And what Especially. I'm saying is that this doesn't, this this is a little bit too fishy for the, for me. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Especially a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, it's not like a, a position. I mean, he is a mobile quarterback, but it's not a position where it's not like a receiver or a DB where you're constantly backpedaling or you're constantly breaking. So I, I'm with you there. Now, what what was going on, on social media, man? I need to, I need to get out there. No, and no, start. no, don't get, don't get. I wait listen, there. man. Hey, man, y'all leave my boy there. alone, man. No, it hap- It happens. I told the guy was like, man, I'm not trying to be. Dis-. I'm like, listen, dude, I didn't take it as disrespect. You can say whatever you want to say on social media. That this is what it is. It's social media. I'm expecting this. It's fine. It's no. It wasn't a big deal. It was only a few words. It was all good. He was respectful at the end. He was respectful at the end. It's good. But you're right. He told me I was doing it for clickbait. I was like, no, I didn't say it for clickbait. I said it because I think it. <laughs> <laughs> clickbait? Come on, man. Oh, Listen, man. We, 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 all right, I'm not going to go. The, it's, the, it's the life. But no, you, you, I thought the same thing when I had, and I said, I said it because before the game, before the last game, it was like he was going to go. And then, Towards the end, and we talked about last week that it started to leak out that oh, it's it's a little bit worse than blah blah blah. He's not gonna go, and and so I I immediately started thinking, okay, something's up. And I, people, you guys got to understand, we we played in the league, we played in this organization, we've seen a lot of stuff, not just on on this organization, but just across the league. league. So we see things, and we know things that a lot of people may not um, may not know. And so if we say, like, okay, that's a little weird, just trust us. It's a little weird. That's all. That's all we're saying. So that's it. Keep your antennas up. It ain't yeah. always it, it's it's like the the secret movie, right? That 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 movie with the with the spies and all that stuff when it looks like something and it really isn't, but they, they give the great media play like it's this and it's not that. Exactly. That's what this is. <laughs> this is a diversion. Yep. All right. So, um, Mish, if Minshew's up this week and he balls, it's a wrap. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If he if he goes up there and he balls, he's gonna he's gonna finish the he's gonna finish his, the the season as a starter. Yeah. And they're gonna move the phase two. And they're and they're going to say, they're going to say that Jalen Hurts' ankle is not getting better, mm-hmm. and something we're gonna, else. We're going to rest him for the future, and we're not going to waste any you know any opportunities for him to get hurt and meaningful meaningless games. We're going to make sure that we can get have him ready for the off season and come back stronger next year. And we now, all know what's going to happen. Listen, I've seen this movie before. I said it before. I've seen this movie before. It just happened a couple of years ago on Nick Foles' second run. Yeah. Nick Nick Foles' second run in the, after after Super Bowl run when we were playing the Rams, Carson Wentz wanted to play. Carson Wentz was told that he shouldn't play and he that that it that no. Carson Wentz wanted to play. Wow. That's when Carson Wentz and the organization begin to go down the bad road. It was that's when it started. 
Because Carson wanted to play. He didn't want to be put set for the rest of the season because he knew what would happen. And it did happen. Yeah. They felt like they felt like the backup would give them a better chance to win. <sighs> History repeats itself. Repeating itself. <laughs> so that's where we are with that. Q, this is the last question. All right. I'm off. I don't know where we're at. I don't know either. <laughs> I'm a little bit on and off. I think. I think. Um, I think I got a little bit of last week in there. Too. Oh wait, no, here I got one. This one's for yeah. you. You get all the questions. This question's for Jason. It was noticeable that Jalen Rager was part of the game plan with Minshew, but also seemed to catch the ball better. Is that a result of a better ball from the backup quarterback, or could it be a combination of that and him working on his concentration during the week? <clears throat> <sighs> timing is different your pep is different when you know you got a real opportunity to get the ball when you feel like a guy can get you the ball like it's a different energy and I think that Jalen Rager sometimes feels like that even if he does do the right thing, the ball may not be there. Like you said earlier in the show, there are times where he is open, didn't get the ball. So when you got that new energy in there and the quarterback is, hey, like, man, look, when you get on this route and they're, they're communicating, they're talking, he's like, dude, it could be that the, that the backup quarterback has a better chemistry with him and feel like, and Jalen Rager feels like he's going to give him a, a fair shot and he doesn't have to be, perfect in order to, to 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 get the thing done you know so i think that has to do with the player that's the player the quarterback position who's that quarterback mm. i think that jalen rager still needs to do a lot better job and getting open on certain routes in certain situations yes i do but i think that him having a mentality that's not discouraged in the moment because of a lack of um faith that the quarterback can get the ball there is gone when when you got a guy that 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 you know can get you the ball. Mm. Cool. Yeah. That's it. So, so could this be could this be the spark that gets him going? All right. If he goes out there this week and yeah, he you know, balls out, could oh, this be Hillary. could we start to see a Oh my Jaylen gosh. Rager? Can you oh. imagine this city of Jalen <laughs> Rigger has a hundred hundred yard game and a touchdown? Can you imagine the city? It was never. He did nothing wrong ever. I knew it was Hurts. I knew it. We never should have gotten rid of Wentz. Now I'm looking men, men shoes in there with the mustache, and he's going. Can you imagine the mustache mania that's about to happen if this if this dude comes out and ball? I'm here for it. I might grow me a, a Fu Manchu. Is that what they call it? Let's him? do it. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm weird. I'm weird. I'll grow this. I'm never going to cut this off. I look like a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you can't do that. Yeah. But, I'll grow it down, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny is, is that I, this city is so enamored with quarterback controversy that we forget that the purpose of the game is to win and the purpose is to root on the team's victory so whoever is at quarterback as long as the team gets the win who gives a damn i got people arguing with me when i see them on the street about my views of the court i'm like listen i don't give a damn which one of them throw it as long as they throw it to the right person and they don't turn it over i don't give a damn like i don't care like but as long as the eagles are winning like i'm not in this this rat race, the foes and Wentz, the Donovan and Feely, the, you know, Jalen Hurts and Minshew, I don't care. <laughs> Throw the ball to the right person, put it on time, and let us run with the mother. <laughs> long as the Eagles win, I'm happy. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't need to be the reason why we win. I don't, I don't need the quarterback to be the reason why we win. Just I don't care it. if we throw it for 300. <laughs> if we ran it for 300 every time, I would be happy when we won. That's it. 
And we scored three, and it was three to zero. As long as we won, I'm still be happy. I may, I'm having some criticism, but we won. The MVP, Jay Elliott, look at that boy kick that 14 yard field goal. We go. That'd be me. Gosh, dog. The birds are the birds. The win is the win. Who cares if he if if he got a mustache or he got a, a um a kid and play fade? I don't care. <laughs> Not the kid in play. <laughs> Man. All right. I'm off my high hat right there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's it. That's all that matters. Just win, man. Just, Just win. win. Just yeah. win. That's it. I, That's it. We, we like to call in the radio station and, and, and give people hell about their selection. <laughs> as long as they win it. Like, listen, if you're not playing well, you're not playing well. That's it. Like, yeah. that's it. It's not a race <clears> thing. <throat> It's not an athletic quarterback thing. It ain't a Wentz thing. It ain't. It, listen, I don't care if the dude was six seven with a pot belly. <laughs> I don't. If, if he can throw it, he can throw it. I don't care what he looks like. All right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh man, Q, you got the last words, man. <laughs> How can I follow that, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, man, it's it's a pleasure. I, I enjoy the show and have fun with it every week. Um, thank you, fans. Thank you, everybody, for supporting us and and uh, always tuning in. Continue to send those questions in. We love them. We'll try to get to as many as we can. And uh, it's always fun, man. I always enjoy these times, man. I, like I said, always I learn something new every single week, and I learn something new this week, man, as always. So oh, you the man. Thank you, man. You the man. You're the man. Go <laughs> on streaking. <laughs> Peace. Peace.